All right, everybody. Wednesday, January 24th. I'm in the 757 for the first time. I've never been here. Very beautiful. Went out to a bar, watched the basketball game last night, had a fantastic time. But we're not here to talk about that. This has been a long, long time in the making. The podcast was promised a year ago, but we finally got here. A graduate student defender from Roland Park Country School in Maryland, Mary Griffin of Virginia Tech Women's Lacrosse. She has played in 47 contests for Virginia Tech. She is a three-time ACC academic honor roller. Smarty pants, smarty pants. And this is an intro, but I'm gonna I'm gonna lead it into an award that I'm gonna give you that we've actually never given out before. This has never been given out. This is oh, this wow. is impromptu. <laughs> okay. So few, few athletes get this distinction, and actually none before you. And I am inventing it right now. It is gonna be called the Terrell Smith Hokey Spirit Award. I see you at every Virginia Tech event. You unapologetically love your school. You are a fantastic representation of Virginia Tech. So I am awarding you, Mary Griffin, the first yeah. ever Terrell Smith Hokey Spirit Award. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And like, it puts a little bit of pressure starting a podcast with that kind of opening. So I hope I live up to that. But wow. I mean, I do love Virginia Tech. And um, I know that's where we've connected at a few games. So um i'm really really excited it's been a wait but i hope i'm worth the wait being on the podcast well it, it says it in my uh in my surname here virginia tech super fan i've had a really interesting um some of my best friends in the world uh graduating from virginia tech uh were the women's lacrosse team we all lived in uh maple ridge our uh, dorms were in the same area and that is just such a great group that is always so close together but i want to talk about your decision to come to Virginia Tech. So mm -hmm. your sister went to UMD, had an incredible career. She was an all Big Ten freshman of the year, but you decided to come to Blacksburg. Why? Oh, I literally could talk about my sister's like lacrosse career forever because it's just <laughs> so exciting. And she won a national championship and just did so many amazing things. And I think when I was younger, I definitely didn't see the positive side of that. Um, that's one of my biggest regrets is just not letting – such a talented person and such a person that's close to me, like use it as a good thing, but more so like I wanted to be different. I wanted to be different than her. So like I wanted to choose a school very different than Maryland. And at the time, Virginia Tech was on the rise. It was one of those new programs with a new coach and um, in the ACC, very competitive. And um, I just really loved the idea of doing something really different. And my parents really pushed for me to visit the school. I didn't, I wasn't really interested, didn't really know much about it. But the second you walk onto Virginia Tech's campus and like you hear everything that they have from when you're like 10 years old, that's what you imagine your college experience to be. And I felt that right from the get go, I stepped on campus. And then what really solidified it was meeting the team at the time. Um, I'll never forget like meeting Sarah Lubno and um, Lee Lingo and Taylor Kasky and Kendall Welch, like those girls I still talk to like every single day of my life. And once I met them and realized the kind of um, vibe and the community that the team was, I just knew I could see myself a part of that team. And the girls definitely sold it. But I mean, the school is also like incredible. And um, it was the best decision I've ever made as a 15 year old, 16 year old. Um, so, but yeah, it was a different experience because recruiting happened so early. We didn't have that rule. So, um, my young self did make a good choice for once. So that's good. <laughs> so you were part, we've talked to a lot of football players about this, about being part of a coaching transition. So obviously you came in, coach John Sung was the head coach and then coach Skira took over the program in 2022. Can you tell us a little bit about that transition? I mean, I gotta be honest. Going through that has to be crazy. Uh, not to mention, on top of that, you had COVID and everything else going on. So as a student athlete, how did you approach that? And then tell me a little bit about Coach Skira. Everything I've seen, my only experience with her was the uh, was the Boo Halloween videos. Uh, but then getting to meet her in person, you're like, oh, this is actually who she is. She's just extremely outgoing and, uh, and bubbly. Oh, yeah. I mean, the transition happened um, at beginning of my junior year. And so my first two years of college were obviously very crazy with COVID. And so I kind of approached it as like, this is such a fresh start. This is such like an exciting new opportunity. And we didn't really know anything about her. I mean, she's from my area, which was really cool. So a lot of people from my hometown were like, you're going to love her. She's like very spunky. And I was just like, okay. And I hadn't played too much um, prior to my junior year. So I just kind of looked at it like, 
pressure's off. She doesn't know who I am. She doesn't know the type of player I am. I'm just going to go in and be myself and work really, really hard and hopefully earn um, some playing time and earn like her trust and respect. And I think everyone was just so excited to fall back in love with lacrosse. Like it was just a very difficult time. I will say my first two years that we kind of lost that love of the game, but the second, like we saw her passion and saw her excitement and just like the goals that she had set for us and like instilled in us, we just like fell in love with lacrosse again. And so the transition was honestly really smooth. And I think having MC as our coach too, who experienced the old coaching staff, but came back as a coach and knows what it was like to be a player specifically at Virginia tech. Having her was just so amazing. And it felt like having a friend that you could confide in. And she just was someone I always ask questions to, but they seriously are such an amazing group and the transition like could not have been easier. And going off of your point, like we call her wags, um, but it's coach Sky, like Skyra wag, whatever. She is exactly how she portrays herself to be on social media. Like she is so funny. She's so outgoing. The scare videos are just like the tip of the iceberg when it comes to her. Like she is just always like bringing the energy. I always say like, I'm so impressed by, she could be so mad at us. And then like, 10 minutes later be like okay guys like what are we doing like super fun like change of energy um someone that I really just like look up to in so many ways and I think we really vibe well together with our energy and just like our goals and like the mindset that we have um she definitely pushes you to be your best self but um does so in a way that you do it not just for yourself but do it for her too so she's just absolutely incredible hires the right people um I love our staff so much they're so much fun and I just can't stress enough like how much they made us love lacrosse again. Like I can't thank them enough for that. So I want to not to put you on the spot, but I want to ask you specifically about something you mentioned twice was goals. Um, and mm -hmm. with athletics, it's always like, well, we want to win this. We want to win this many games. I want to be an all American, like walk me through what made that so different than any other type of goal setting that you had over the course of your mm -hmm. career. I think like who we want to do it for. I think, we want to win an ACC championship. We want to win a national championship. That's always been said, but now we're not doing it just because, Oh, we're in college. We're playing college cross. That's the things you're supposed to say. We're doing it because we genuinely want to, and I want to do it for myself, but I also want to do it for the girls beside me and for my coaches. Like I've never felt such a passion and such a connection to my coach before. And like the, absolute like disappointment when something doesn't go well. Like I feel as bad for myself as I bad, as I feel bad for her and all the girls around me. So I think that that's such, such a connection that we have. Um, we're all on the same page and um, our kind of motto this year is like buy in. And I think we're seeing this for like one of the first times in Virginia tech lacrosse history is how bought in every single person is. Every single person has the same goals, has the same dreams and um, knows what it takes to get there. And it's been a journey getting to this point, but we're definitely in that like buy-in era right now, which I'm really excited about. Print the shirts, Mary. Buy-in. Buy-in. We, we got plans for it. Don't worry. Like, Wags is, <laughs> Wags is on it. <laughs> um, so the season starts on February 10th, and as a leader, experienced player on this roster, um, what is the dynamic of this team? You kind of alluded to it. Everybody's bought in, but uh, how have you all grown together, and what are you most excited about this upcoming year? Oh, I mean, being a fifth year, I I just like the forefront of my mind is um, remembering like how I felt the past four years, but mm -hmm. also remembering to take in the moments. Um, I want to make it a good year because I want it to be a good year for myself, but I also want to establish a really good foundation for the girls of the future in the program. And I want to be the alum that can look back and say like, when a Virginia Tech team does win a national championship, if it's not this year, but I hope it is. But if it's not, I want to be like, I was a part of like the start of that. And mm -hmm. I do have high hopes for every single person that comes in this program. And I think every single year, every single year, it's just getting better and better. And we're just getting more passionate and more competitive. And also, I think every year our team somehow gets closer. Like if there's one thing we could pride ourselves on, we are so much fun and we are a group of 45 best friends. Like every single person could be in a room with one other person on the team and wouldn't it be awkward. It wouldn't be weird. Like it would just be fun. And 
um, the energy would be there and the joy would be there. And just the care that we have for one another is absolutely incredible. And um, I really hope that culture continues on. And um, I know when I leave, like, establishing that the people behind me are the right people to continue that culture. So I'm really excited. So transitioning a little bit away from, uh, it's still involved in sports, but um, you're an ambassador for the Morgan's message, which is a nonprofit amplifying the stories, resources, and expertise co to confront student athlete mental health. First of all, huge hat tip to you for doing that. Um, I just want to know, like, what encouraged you to get involved in that? And what connections or lessons have you learned from your involvement uh, with Morgan's Message? Yeah, I mean, Morgan's Message is just such an amazing organization and nonprofit. And the reason I started it was honestly one of um, another lacrosse player, Lizzie Colson, who is a huge ambassador and advocate for mental health. And she actually played with my sister and she started a podcast um, because it was like part of her psychologist project for undergrad school. And I went on her podcast and I just kind of like talked about mental health openly. And she was just the way she worded mental health and the way she approached it was just so inspiring and so comfortable that I like looked into more how she was involved in Morgan's message was an organization that first popped up. And so I like looked into it and it's a community that's really grown, but the foundation of it and its core is lacrosse, like lacrosse players. Um, so I just knew so many people that were already ambassadors and, um, it felt like a no brainer to get involved and, um, my connection with them and the con connection with the people that are a part of it has grown tremendously. I mean, there's there, they have a podcast as well. And being a guest on that was incredible. And I formed so many connections with the host and the producer and even Morgan's mom and Morgan's best friend who do so much behind the scenes of Morgan's message. Um, this past fall actually came to Virginia Tech and we did a whole Morgan's message um, day where teams met with them and we talked about mental health and it was so powerful and so impactful to just have real authentic and vulnerable conversations when it comes to mental health and athletes. And I think this one really hit close to home because Morgan um, played lacrosse at Duke. Wags is an alum of Duke and um, we just see ourselves in Morgan so much and every single person has mental health. It's not just something you have if it's negative. And um, the lacrosse community has been a really good part and foundation of starting that conversation. And Morgan's message is just an organization I'm so proud to be a part of, and it will only continue to grow. So we talked about your Hokie Spirit Award. Again, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I want to clap. Also, you're going to get no, we're going to figure something out, whether if it's a Christmas <laughs> ornament or something. I mean, it looks like you're uh, if you can't if you're not watching on here, it actually looks like you're in like an Ikea display room. There's no, you have to have the <laughs> all most of my furniture is Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that. You have to have one of the most most put together college rooms, but you are oh, a fifth year. You are a graduate. So um, I saved this uh, for now. So if you didn't know when you're listening to this. Uh, Mary G and Georgia Amor actually shared uh, a dorm or a suite. So just walk me through kind of that. These are two huge personalities in a very small uh, area. So how did you guys get to know each other? Just tell me a little bit about your relationship with the women's basketball team in Georgia and uh, your memories of freshman year. Well, it's actually tragic because our freshman year got cut short mm -hmm. and she came as a transfer um, second semester. So I remember leaving for winter break, um, going home. And I lived with a one lacrosse girl and a bunch of swim girls. And I came back from winter break and my swim roommates, they were like, um, someone moved out, but we got like a new roommate. She's Australian. Like she's on the basketball team. And I was like, what? Like, that's so cool. And like, the first thing I wanted to do was just like, hear her accent. I know that's <laughs> so lame, but I was just like, can you talk like anything? I'll be honest, when Oscar got to Virginia Tech and when we interviewed uh, Georgia for the first time, that was the exciting thing. It was yeah. like, yeah, I get to listen to my, some Australia speak. So. Yeah, like exactly. And I've always mm -hmm. like for some reason loved Australia and like loved their accent. So I was just like all about it. And I just remember talking to her and just like we connected over a show that we both like, like Summer Heights High, which is an Australian show. It's so funny. Highly recommend if you haven't seen it. You, you just, you just, you just came across it. Like I like <laughs> knew it because of one of my teammates. She was like, wait, this show's Australian and then showed it to me. And George was like, oh yeah, that's like really big in Australia. And it's really funny if you can watch mm -hmm. it on YouTube. Um, so we connected over that. And then she 
remembers this i don't but the first time we met supposedly she walked into the dorm room and it was post my um it was post christmas and i got a spray tan booth like mm -hmm. machine like i had the big tent set up and um had the machine someone was in the booth getting spray tanned by me and like everyone was watching because they were like so intrigued by like me having this machine and like starting this like little business of mine yeah. and she was like yeah no i walked in and like you were just spray tanning like a bunch of like girls and i was like <laughs> okay sounds about right like i still participate in that um i was like it was probably a good way to introduce myself while i'm like yeah. spray tanning my teammates but um, I definitely think she was alarmed and it was just kind of like a welcome to America type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but honestly, our friendship really took off my junior year. So um, COVID happened. So she obviously um, went and co uh, she was on spring break and then my team was on spring break. So we didn't really see each other until. And the cachet of the accent is over. Like you're like, all right, yeah. you have the accent. It's cool. Like, so yeah, now like you're, I was now over are we it. actually friends? Right. <laughs> I was over it by that time. There's still times I don't understand her. Like, I'm like, I can't, your accent's cool, but I have no idea what you're saying. So, um, but junior year, we definitely rekindled our friendship and um, it was just, it was the type of thing where I'm like, Oh, like a freshman year was longer and it didn't get cut short. We definitely would have been closer. But now that junior year is here, um, our friendship took off. It's very natural. Like she, I see a lot of parts of me in her and like, she's just so funny. And like, whenever we hang out, it's very carefree. It's very light. And um, this past year, we've definitely gotten even closer. Um, we've dabbled in rapping. We dabbled in um, wow. some original songs. I'm at every single one of her games. Like I watch Winnie all the time. Like her dog, um, been on their podcast. So our friendship has only grown. I always tell Georgia and Liz, I'm like, you guys are going to be my wedding. And they don't think it's serious, but I'm so serious. Like they will be bridesmaids. Um, so yeah, they're absolutely incredible. But I'm very happy. I always forget like George and I started off as roommates um, because it just was like so like it was so long ago, but also like so not like the way our friendship is now. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's absolutely hilarious. And it's so funny just to see like the Virginia Tech community like fangirl over her because I'm like, wait, this is the girl like I'll just like sit on the couch with and like just literally do nothing i'm like okay like she's cool but like <laughs> she's just like normal to me <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned the fangirl thing and this is one thing yeah. that i thought was so funny was um her ability to just be witty in the face of weird stuff so oh when God. virginia tech women's basketball took off if you're listening to this podcast and you were one of the people that tweeted this like i don't have anything against you but it's a little weird they started doing like the Yo, Hunter Couture and George Amor should just like have kids and have like super hokey Virginia Tech children. And it was just like pretty weird, pretty odd. Yeah. Probably would freak yeah. out any other athlete, but then Georgia. She's getting intention there. <laughs> she, Georgia yeah. punches right back with the fake proposal at midcourt uh, a couple weeks ago, which was so funny. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I saw that picture getting taken live and I was like, watch out, Hokey Nation. Like, they're going to get confused. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. No, she is so witty. It's so witty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it goes over my head. I'm like, wait that was a jab like I just yep. won't even know like yep. she's it, she's very witty and like mm -hmm. um and last year her family came and visited and um I don't know if you know this but my parents actually moved to Blacksburg and they have two spare bedrooms so her parents stayed with my family and um they're gonna be staying again so her parents her grandparents and her sister um and her family friend are all staying at my parents again in February so um we definitely just our relationship has definitely taken off and just grown deeper and I do plan on going to Australia in June. So, oh wow! Gonna, I I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. I, I don't have any set plans. I don't have yeah. a date, but I plan to be in that um yeah. in that area with her. So as of now, on the uh, on June or July, it just says to do go to Australia. Go to we'll Australia. figure the rest out. Oh, okay. We'll graduation out. present. You never know. I don't know what the plan you. is, but I'll be there. <laughs> um. So. Last question before rapid fire. What does Mary Griffin wants to do when she graduates? I know we mm -hmm. talked about this at a super high level, but yes. on the dream board, I don't know if you have like a dream catcher over your bed. I know that's big in college right now. Like what is, what is the goal? What do you, what do you think you would be really good at? Okay. Well, in a perfect like fantasy world, I would love to have my own talk show. Okay. <laughs> I think it would be so much fun. Like one of my little goals, little goals, I guess. Little pretty, is not pretty, pretty big goal. 
but little goal is to do a TED talk. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I would love to do a TED talk. Um, as you can tell, I love to hear myself talk. So anything involving that, but to narrow it, I would love to just work in an industry that really helps with student athletes and mental health. I've never really been able to like connect well with a group of people like I do with student athletes and coaches. And I would love just to have an impact in that. Um, and it would be something I'm very passionate about and something I wouldn't feel like I'm like working. And I mm -hmm. think that's the goal of my work. Um, and I just know I really just want to stay in the sports industry world. I don't know what that will exactly look like. I thought of coaching a little bit, um, try collegiate coaching. My sister did that for a year or two. So it's definitely something that's on the forefront of my mind, but I know the area that I want to work in, okay. but a dream world, I'd be like Oprah Winfrey or something. <laughs> I mean, that would be, I, I, I would like to be Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, right. I know. Who wouldn't? <laughs> well, someday someone's going to want to grow up and be Mary Griffin. So that's, that's, that's the goal. I right love there. that. I There's love that. There's the big goal. <laughs> clip that. Um, <laughs> rapid. I will clip that. Rapid, uh, <laughs> rapid fire here. This is a tough one. This is a okay. tough one. And you'd be prepared if you listen to other shows, but I'm not going to put that on you. So maybe you don't have your list ready. <laughs> but if you could have dinner with four people, dead or alive, four. who would they be and where are you going to eat? Four people. Oh, my goodness. It's a tough one. Whew. It's a dinner like we're all eating together. So I need to like think of dynamics. That's how that works. Yep. You would okay, all. Okay. Yep. Okay. I would say Kobe Bryant would be up there okay. i would love to just like pick his brain apart like i would okay. love to just like be like what like what's the mamba mentality mm -hmm. how do i get better um i would say jennifer lawrence i love her i think she's like my favorite actress and she's also really funny mm -hmm. so um and then beyonce is like my absolute idol like i love beyonce so much so she's up there and then Hmm, my fourth one, I would say, this is really tough. It is. Uh, it's a hard question. This is a hard, four is a lot. Um, and you've also picked three people that are alive. No, no you Kobe haven't. You have not. not. Kobe Bryant, no, you, no, you didn't. Sadly, he's not. Oh, okay, maybe Betty White. Let's throw her in there. Okay. It would be fun. <laughs> interesting, interesting conversation it'll for sure. Good, it'll be a good dinner. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite on-field and off-the-field memory at Virginia Tech? On field, um, I would say when we beat JMU my junior year, it was our first time in program history to beat them. And it was our first win we could give to WAGS. Mm -hmm. And it was like a really big upset. And I'll never forget, like, like selfishly, like this one is just, I actually got benched our first game um, with WAGS because I didn't play good 1v1 defense. And so I like practiced all week with my 1v1s. And they like gave me the starting position back. And then I actually had like the cause turnover to like secure the win on a one v one. So I was like, okay, I did it right. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and it was just so exciting, like seeing like history be made and just seeing our coaches' excitement, seeing all of our hard work pay off. And I'll never forget like being on the field like as the clock's winding down, um, off the field. And just to let you know, that was a bit. And just to let you know, just to give you an idea of how big, um, like our friend group. So the Tristan McGinley's, the Kelly Gladhorns, all of them. When that game was going down, we were all following it on our phone oh, at our yeah. prospective work times. And these are across all sorts of timelines. So you do have that connection of like women's lacrosse. I know I mentioned it earlier. Like in my time at Virginia Tech, your group always seemed to be the most like fun and together and like outgoing group. Um, yeah. That is true. And they're all they're all following a lot. So I love to see the support. Yeah. Um, so I so. love it. Like the alums are we have the best alums ever. And like our team mm -hmm. is just so much fun. And um it's indescribable. Um, off the field, my favorite memory. Oh gosh, I don't even know. Like, I I really do love the scares that Wags does. Like, and I mm -hmm. I think scaring her this year in 7-Eleven is up there. Like getting her back at her own game um yeah. at like 5 30 in the morning while she's getting her mm -hmm. morning coffee. Like that one was definitely good. And it's something that like in my three years with her, I like we've tried to scare her and no one's done it. So right. I just, that was a very big accomplishment, but mm -hmm. <laughs> we definitely are just always having fun. Like we're always pranking. Like we love pranks. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> um, well, who is the most impactful? This is another, I'm, I've given you a lot of tough ones. I feel like I usually only do like two. 
Who is the most impactful person in your time at Virginia Tech? Oh. Well, okay, an obvious one would be like Anne, my athletic trainer that like actually saved my life. Mm -hmm. um, and like she goes beyond that, like our connection goes way deeper. But um, in terms of playing, I would say Sarah Lubno and Jordan Tilly. Um, Sarah Lubno, she was my captain for two years. And the way she just led is just how I would want to be as a leader. Um, she, her passion, her competitiveness, and also her just like, she's just human. Like she just gets it. And she is very sympathetic, empathetic, and, but also like can put you in your place. And she's someone I talk to every single day. And then Jordan Tilly is just like my little opposite, like being a captain with her last year. She's really patient. She's very kind. Um, and I'm a little bit more fiery when it comes to that, mm -hmm. but she balanced me out so well. And she's just so kind and an amazing player. Both of them are just incredible players. And um, it's just people that I would feel good if someone told me I reminded them of them. So I, I think those two as players and as people have really impacted me. And then of course, Anne is, has impacted me in more ways than I can even imagine and impacted my family in a lot more ways than um, I can even describe. So those three, that's like a three for one. <laughs> you brought it in. For those of you that don't know, can you um, describe Anne's impact on your life yeah. and what you went through your sophomore year? Uh, we were talking about COVID. We were talking about everything, but um, life threw you a pretty crazy curveball yeah. uh, over your uh, over your tenure at Tech. Yeah, I definitely like sum it up as um, my first two years of college were impacted by the two C's, COVID and cancer. Um, my freshman year of the season was cut short because of COVID. And then um, we go back sophomore year after a long time in quarantine. And I just was like ready to like take on that year. And I felt really just kind of refreshed because of how much time we had off. And I was feeling really motivated. Um, but unfortunately, like the first couple of weeks of conditioning, I felt a pain on my right side and um, and didn't really like what she saw. So she ordered me a CT scan and the CT scan actually revealed a 10 centimeter tumor that none of us really expected to see um, or expected the news of. And at the time I was 19, so I didn't really know what that meant. I didn't know if that just meant I had cancer. And so they were like, no, the next step is getting a biopsy. Um, to test the tumor. And so I got it tested. And the day of my biopsy, I actually tested positive for COVID. So <laughs> I was, Anne was like, we still have to get the biopsy done. Because in reality, I didn't know if I could just sit in my room for two weeks. Like we didn't know how fast this tumor was growing. We didn't know how dangerous it was. So um, I had a great team behind me and drove me to my appointment. She was wearing a shield windows down. It was pouring rain. Like we were soaking wet by the time we got to the hospital because she couldn't get COVID. Um, I was in a shield and then they operated on me with hazmat suits and all the good stuff. And so um, the next step was just being in isolation for 10 days because I had COVID. And on day three, um, I was scheduled to have a Zoom call with my doctor and Anne. And my mom was supposed to come down for the appointment, but because I had COVID, she had to get on the Zoom call as well. And no one knew what, what the doctor was going to say. But um, I remember just sitting on the Zoom call and the doctor using very big words. But in summary, he just was like, yeah, like at 19 years old, you're diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And I think that was just the last news any of us expected. And I remember quickly shifting my focus on my mom, who's on the screen and just being like, mom, like, I'm OK. Like, everything's going to be OK. Like, I wasn't too worried about myself. I wasn't worried about how I was feeling. It was more so like my poor mother like i in some ways i wish she had known before the call and known before me um but i do think it was just so unexpected that i just didn't really have time to like think it through and know its depth until later on and um another hard part was after getting that news i had to go into seven more days of isolation because of covid so i was just sitting in my room it was a really like it's smaller than the room i'm in now and i just was like getting phone calls and texts and food dropped off, but like being physically alone for a week with that news and just being really scared and being really alone um, was definitely a hard added part to already mm -hmm. a tough time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then in November I got surgery. Luckily that was the only treatment I needed. And after surgery, the river of recovery just looked like lots of PT, lots of rehab and, um, 
before you knew I was cleared and ready to go in February for our first game and actually got to play wow. in it. So um not sure if it was my brightest idea of playing in the first game and pushing my body to that point, but it was definitely something that once I got my mind made up, I was doing it and I did it. And that's something that no one can take away from me. And I did it for so many people that stepped up when me and my family needed it the most. And um, it's something that I'll always be proud of. And it's a moment that I'll never forget. Mary G, you're a stud. We will absolutely share um, that you. story. There's a great, uh, there's a great feature. Um, I believe it's on the Virginia Tech Athletics website, but we'll go ahead and uh, share that in the podcast as well. Um, shifting gear. This almost seems like inappropriate, but it's the next question on the, on the docket. Mary G, do you have a celebrity crush? Do I have a celebrity crush? Okay. Can't well, say like Beyonce that. and can't say Jennifer Lawrence. Okay. I would say Tyler Cameron from The Bachelor. He was on Hannah Brown's season. I love him. I love Chase Crawford from, um, what is it called? Gossip Girl. I like all the pretty boys, I guess, is what I'm saying. Boys, yeah. um, and then um, Ryan Reynolds. Because okay. he's also funny. Like, I really appreciate his humor when it comes mm -hmm. to, like, how he interacts with Blake Lively and, like, their family. Um, but he's also just so cute. So I would say those three. <laughs> Blake Lively, also cute. So yeah, no, she's yeah. great. <laughs> what about a pregame pre playlist? What do you listen to before you play? Okay, this is like so embarrassing. Not embarrassing, but typical. And Georgia's going to laugh at me because it was my number one song two years ago on Spotify. It was Dreams and Nightmares. And like, <laughs> I, I just like have to listen to it. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I know every word. It's so embarrassing, but like, I have to listen to it. Um, I actually, every morning on the game day, I drive to 7-Eleven, blast it and wait for the song to end, walk into 7-Eleven, buy my drink and then walk out. And then I had to play like another song. Mm -hmm. Um, that song it changes depending on the day. It's a great song. Yeah, yeah. no, dreams is my nightmares is like a, a staple. <laughs> a so that's song. like I'm just gonna be honest, like it is that song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's a few that our team will do. Um, and it's just fun. Like I'm definitely like the a, a person that will dance in the locker room. Like I don't mm -hmm. want to sit and like get in the zone like no i'm like active trying to get everyone else we definitely up. we definitely didn't take you as the head down thinking no. about what's gonna happen <laughs> I am the, not that. yeah <laughs> i'm like i just need to just be fun keep the energy mm. like you know but dreams and nightmares on my way to 7-eleven so <laughs> pre-game superstitions um so i had to go to 7-eleven i have, have to, to listen to dreams and nightmares i have to listen to dreams and nightmares i have to wear a certain sports bra on game days um i let me think my hair has to look like good. Like if I don't get it in the first try, like mm -hmm. it's not a good sign. Um, I have to like, we'll do like ground balls in a drill, like in warmups. And if I get like my first ground ball, like a competitive ground ball, like I won't do any more. I'll be like, okay, I got my, I like need to win. I'll just say I had to end on a win yep. um, to like feel good. Um, yeah, I had to. Yeah, nothing too crazy. I mean, I mean you had like four, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, nothing crazy, nothing wild. <laughs> I'm not that much of a habitual yeah. person. I have to get my coffee. I don't participate in warm ups. I listen to this one song before I go in and get my coffee. coffee. Nothing, no, nothing wild. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, best food in Blacksburg. Mm. Ooh, this is tough. That's kind of hard though, because like you, could do category, like you could do categories, yeah. right? Like you could be yeah. like. Okay, I want to go to a nice dinner. I'm going here. Okay, I, it, you know, it's two o'clock in the morning. I need to get some food. Like, you know, yeah, but it's different. I love 622. I love okay. their salmon. I love salmon. And then they also have trivia on Thursdays, which is fun. I'm not okay. good at it, but it's a lot of fun. I've so, never had, I don't think I've ever had salmon in Blacksburg. I'll change it this weekend. I'm going to go. 622. I'm gonna try that. That's the salmon. place to do it if you're going to do it. I'm telling you, I love salmon. So, what is the most underrated spot in Blacksburg? <laughs> underrated spot Ooh, i don't this isn't in blacksburg it's in christiansburg but gardner's ice cream have you been there no never heard oh of my it. god it's so good it's like 15 okay. minutes from 10 15 minutes from blacksburg but it's like literally like 30 ice cream flavors soft serve gelati like okay we have so much and like you get so much for like so cheap and like mm -hmm only open in like the warm months so it's not open right now but 
it's so good. It's like an outside place. Like you walk up to the window. Um, it's, it's fun. I love that place and it's so good. Um, so I think that place is underrated and I didn't even discover until last year, which is like such a downfall of mine. Cause I love ice cream. Have you gone to Sakura in Christiansburg? Kabuki? Kabo no, 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 no. There's Kabuki and then there's Sakura. Sakura no. is, they're going to, okay, you need to go do this. Okay. They're going to give you like a, um, a, what is it? A styrofoam box? Yes, yes. And it's it's not Kabuki. They're not going to cook it in front of you. Like you're going to have no idea what's going on inside, but their food is bang. It comes out. You gotta, you okay, know. I got it. Sakura is like the hibachi place I grew up with. So I'm like, okay, I'll have to check it out. Where is it's, it? It's in Christiansburg. I haven't been there in years. I'll have to, I'll send, I'll send you the address. It okay. may not even be open anymore, but it, it when it was, it it's definitely had like a C minus on the food safety rating, but that's right. What you're looking for. Matter. It was really good. So we love hibachi. Like that's, I literally mm -hmm. went like a couple of days ago, so I'll definitely check it out. All right. This one's tough. Mm. Would you rather for the rest of your life, wake up in the morning and eat a jar of mayonnaise or have stop signs for hands. Eat a man, eat mayonnaise every day. Every day, mayo to the your breath is gonna be crazy. That's gonna <laughs> ruin your day. But I can just do it in the morning and just like be done. Like a jar of man, okay? Like it's hands, I need them. That's true. Like a stop sign for hand. What am I supposed to do? Like I can't even drive. You can't. You'd be the world's best uh, traffic direction or person. I could, but that's you not could. my dream. I I think I'm gonna stick with the mayo. That's disgusting, <laughs> but. I don't know. Maybe I'd like, can you cheat it? Like put in a, a smoothie? Like, I don't know. I don't know if that would make it any better. I don't uh, yeah. you, could you, could you just make, could you just make like a 15 plates of tuna salad? I don't know. Yeah, like chicken salad, shrimp salad, anything. Anyway, uh, I don't know. I need my hands. <laughs> letters from the lunch pail. Um, we got about 20. I picked four. Um, so first one is from Georgia. She wants to know, will you ever bring back Mary G spray tans? Or is that something you're doing now? What is, what is the, it is something is I, I dabble in. I think an entrepreneur. Yeah. I, I've had a little bit of business experience here and there. Haven't stuck with one, but I do still have the machine. Um, I need to buy solutions soon, but yeah, whenever someone asks, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Um, it's fun. I, I, I get spray tans out of it too. Like my friends know how to spray tan. So um, it's great. I think, I, I mean, I love it. So I'm still doing it and I, I need to get back on it. I need to like promote it more. Well, I was saying, if you want to add, we'll, we'll give you like a couple of months of free ad reads and you'll have hundreds of people lined up for spray tans. Okay. I mean, Mary G sprays. Summer, summertime's right around the corner. Yeah. Needed. Sophia Price, who's great. Sophia yeah. Price, she yeah. is always, talk about a person who's like, wow, their life is awesome. I mean, she's touring yeah. with Elton John. She's taking pictures at, you know, professional sports games. Sophia Price, shout out to you. But she wants to know, what is your favorite quote? Oh, this is such a Sophia Price question. Like, so wholesome. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, so like my quote that my mom told me when I was diagnosed and I was just kind of like confused on why like that was happening in my life. Um, but I knew I wanted to like make it a bigger purpose. She told me a quote by Robin Roberts. Um, and it's make your mess your message. And I, th that's just always stuck with me. Um, it's literally like hanging up in my room. Um, but it's just like every single person has a mess in their mm -hmm. life and has dealt with hardship, but there's a message out of it. But even if you don't know the message, you can turn it into whatever message you want it to be. So, um, just taking something bad and making it the best thing to ever happen to you and making it your greatest asset is something I had to quickly learn, but I, I'm so thankful and so grateful for the person that I am as a result of getting diagnosed with cancer at 19, I think I wouldn't change it for the world because of just how much I've learned and the things that I've really learned about myself and the new morals that I have when I approach anything in life. Let's go print the t-shirt again, make the mess. I know mess we did all these, this merch, let's do it. <laughs> um, we got a ton of questions from a bunch of people that were asking Basically, we're asking for you to say that they were your favorite person. So I think that this is a good opportunity for you to just say, I love everybody. We were I, asked, who's your favorite roommate? Who's your favorite person that lives on Main Street? Like, I think it's just, we love everybody. I do love everyone. Like, I, there's not like one personality that I'm drawn to. I love everyone. Shout out to um, my home street. Like, 
best place ever. Shout out to my team. Um, I love all my teammates. I love every single person. Yeah. No hate. <laughs> like I just love everyone. So it covers go. the ground. <laughs> there we go. Um, Bill Brie Randazzo favorite gloss combo. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the answer is. Um, so this is Liv's mom, Liv on my team. And before a fall ball game, I was like, girl, like your lips look so good. Like, what are you using? And she <laughs> gave it to me and I played with like this lip gloss on. Um, and I was like, look good, feel good, play good, you know? So I forget what brand it was, but I, I, anyone on my team knows this. Like I love lip plumper. Like I, I love it. Like any gloss that like, have, I don't know if you've ever like that. I have not. I haven't. Um, but <laughs> but I'll, 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 get, I'll get, I'll get right on that next podcast. I'll, I'll need I'll you. Give you I'll give Here, you Miss, Miss Randazzo, please, please send Mary and myself a shipment and I'll start applying mm -hmm. before podcasts and you'll be all, you'll add that to your list of uh, pregame yes. routines. Yes. A lip plumper. It just like, it doesn't feel like it hurts. It stings a little bit. Oh, but it makes your lips like a bigger and mm -hmm. it's great. That's like, a need whenever I wear stuff on my lips. Like that's what I'm going for. I'm going for bigger lips and a little face pain. Next podcast, exactly. I'm going to be. I'm it's gonna be in. Hard. Okay, it's in right now. I'm telling you. <laughs> I am going to. I'll try it, and I'll. I'll, yeah, I'll don't get lip filler. Just get the gloss, and you're fine. right. Um, <laughs> and Liz Kitley with the last question: favorite Taylor Swift album? Oh my god, this is so hard because there's just so many different vibes. Um. I know. I would say folklore is definitely like what made me a Swifty. Mm -hmm. Like that one is just like more of like the sad, like soul music. But right now I would say reputation is the era that I'm like really vibing with right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm waiting for her to drop Taylor's version. So very different answers, but I would, and Liz is going to kill me because before I was like really a Swifty, I was like, I like her music. I just like, don't like reputation. And now oh, I like love yeah. reputation and Classic. she calls me out for it. So um, I'll own it. I was not like cultured at that moment, but now I like I, reputation. <laughs> I really think so. I'm with you on folklore because folklore is like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get made fun of for this, but folklore is like if August was music or like, like early okay. fall was music. Yes. That's what it is. Like that's the soundtrack. It's August and it's exactly. the best. Oh, so, yes. it's great. So, no, no, it's August. absolutely fantastic. I think you summed it up well. I would sum it up that way too. That's right. <laughs> Mary G, this has been awesome. Uh, we are so excited uh, for, well, maybe, who knows? Maybe some more eligibility down the road. Who knows? Maybe I six years. I, I mean, would love that. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna tweet at the NCAA and make sure that we do everything we can to make that happen. But uh, thank you for being such a great representation of Virginia Tech. Thank you for loving Virginia Tech and your story. Seriously, your story is inspiring and really, really cool. And I appreciate um, appreciate you taking the time. We'll get you on again soon. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. It was so much fun.